Welcome in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're glad that the Holy Spirit led you to us this day. Today, in the sermon, a couple questions we'll, I'll try to answer. One is, what do dogs and cats inadvertently teach us about handling wealth? And secondly, according to the Gospels, what is the moral issue that bugged Jesus the most. We invite your prayers for the Shopper family. Leon passed through death into our Lord's care last Sunday, and his funeral was held at Prince of Peace this past Thursday, with Pastor Anna officiating. And now I invite you to take a deep breath, and as we prepare ourselves for worship, to find a still place that we can listen to the God who still speaks. Amen. Our call to worship sounds like this. Welcome in the name of God who creates, saves, and calls us with grace that lasts forever. For we are dreamed and formed by a God who has declared the generous identity, I am who I am. We are claimed and loved by God who does not conform and who cannot be contained. The Holy Spirit gathers this online community to embody the love, safety, and joy that God desires. And we are made in God's own image worthy of love, belonging, and purpose. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, rich in mercy, you feel deep compassion for this troubled world and for all your children. Feed us with your grace and share with us the treasure that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. Our gospel acclamation is a hallelujah. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, 
Have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things and Lazarus, Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God's beloved people. Do you know what bothered Jesus more than lying, more than stealing, more than sexual moralities? It was the gap between the rich and the poor. Last week and this week, we're hearing some difficult stories. How to understand wealth with all of its challenges and with all of its gifts. And like all of Jesus' stories, there are three truths about these stories. All stories are true, and some of them actually happened. Secondly, all stories are about us, all of us together as a congregation. And three, the stories that Jesus tells are not against us, they're for us, but they are meant to transform us. Now, Pastor Anna, last week, told us the story of this cheating middle manager, and she pointed out a fault in the man's logic, that thinking the currency of this present age could buy him a place in the next age, in heaven, with the children of the light. And then she said this, but no one can buy what is already free. That was a memorable line for me. Jesus seems to be telling us a similar thing this week in the story that Bobby Bringy just read. He wants us to know that we're worth more than our bottom line, more than our billable hours, more than our individual contribution to the gross national product. Otherwise, when we find ourselves in tough times, we'll wonder where all of our brains and our guts and our long hours have gotten us. As I listened last week, I was reminded of another story. It's about this dog who notices that it gets all of its wealth from this being, its owner, shelter and affection and food and love and attention and tummy scratches and squeaky toys. And the dog thinks, wow, this being must be God. And living in that same house is this cat. And the cat notices that it gets all this wealth, affection and attention and food and shelter and love and tuna. And the cat concludes, Wow, I must be God. The scriptures tell us that the Pharisees were kind of this money-obsessed bunch. And they heard Jesus tell last week's story, and they rolled their eyes, and they dismissed him as hopelessly out of touch. So Jesus tells this story to them. And basically, he says, you're all kind of a bunch of cats. 
And then he drops this little gem of this unnamed rich guy and this servant who's got a name, Lazarus. Now, remember who Jesus is talking to. These were people who were sure, arrogantly certain, in fact, that the gateways to God were always open to them. They knew the rules and they played by them. And they were not sinners and they were not tax collectors. And they fully expected reserved seats in the kingdom in the special section set aside for the chosen people. In baseball terms, they were people who were born on third base but thought they had hit a triple. They were sure what God's priorities were. For example, blessing people with prosperity if they were good. And they calculated their chances for skyboxes in heaven by focusing on the sins of other people as if they could free up more seating for themselves by eliminating their competition. Today, the unnamed man is not condemned for being wealthy, which is a relief to all of us who were born on third base. He's condemned for not helping Lazarus, for not even seeing Lazarus. You see, money was not the rich man's problem. It was the gate that he bought with it. Now, if that gate had just kept Lazarus off his property, that would have been one thing. But it did more than that. It kept Lazarus off his hands as well. It kept Lazarus off his heart and his mind. He thought that once he had enough money to buy a gate, he was safe from all the unsightliness on the other side of it. This is the way the children of the present age think, Pastor Anna told us last week. It's not the way of children of the light. Now, we don't know if Jesus secretly enjoys undermining us as those of us who see ourselves as wealthy, self-made individuals thanks to our brains and hard work, our billable hours and such. But I would be surprised if that was the only reason that Jesus wants us to know this story. Remember, what bothers Jesus the most is when there is a divide among his children, like a gap between the rich and the poor, like a missing one sheep out of a hundred, or like a missing coin out of ten. These are the stories he's been telling in succession. Now, priest and author Barbara Brown Taylor writes, Jesus could not stand the way people love the things they could get for themselves better than they love the things that God wanted to give them. You see, children of this age were satisfied with sumptuous feasts and fine linen suits when God really wanted to give the children of the light the whole kingdom. Children of this age are content to live in a world with beggars and tyrants when God wants to give us brothers and sisters. Children of this age are, are happy to get by with the parts of the Bible that back up their own ways of life when God wants to give us a whole new way of living. What they did not seem to know and what we still are struggling with is that we are one flock of sheep, one set of coins, one family, children of the light, all of us. When we succeed in cutting ourselves off from each other, and we, when we learn how to live with the misery of other people, convincing ourselves that, well, they somehow deserve that, when we defend our good fortune as a blessing from God and are unwilling to see that our lives are connected, quilted together with all people, when, then we are the losers. Not because of what God will do to us, but because what we've done to ourselves. In simple terms, we need to become more dog-like than cat-like. The kingdom of God has its own economic system. It's based on everybody matters. Everyone has a voice. 
We're all God's beloved. And money can't change that unless we insist that it does. Our true value lies in the God who loves us, who keeps hoping that we will learn to love each other also. Amen. Worship continues with the prayer of the church. Let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need in all of God's good creation, calling on the name of our loving God. O oh God, you are filling your church with mercy that we might know one another as sisters and brothers, that we might act in ways that are neighborly and dignified. Teach us to begin risking so that we do the things that make for peace and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ever-present God, make of us comfort for the sorrowing, especially for the Zacines, the Johnsrues, Trulsons, and Shoppers. Make, us, make of us friendship for the forgotten, freedoms for the oppressed. Make us wide-eyed for beauty and for goodness beyond these walls, and make us wide-hearted for love and wide-willed, intentional for mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Persistent God, deliver us from just going through the motions and wasting everything we have, which is today a chance, a choice, in your call. Teach us to practice faith on purpose. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the angel armies, we lift our prayers to you, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And we pray together the prayer that Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, at this time of offering, we thank you for your generosity throughout the year. From COVID on, 
It has been astounding, and we're very grateful. When many churches have found the need to cut staff and cut back on resources, your trust in our ministries and your support of them has allowed us to actually add a staff member, a parish visitor. You've allowed us to purchase a hymnal supplement that we use every week in worship, and some of those powerful lyrics today came from All Creation Sings. And now we're preparing to form a call committee. So in our offering, we thank you for considering being on this committee. It's one of the most impactful decisions that a congregation makes for its future. We're calling an associate pastor, um, the, and the call committee will formalize our needs, um, exactly who we are right now as a church, as, as we get prepared to call someone into that associate pastor position that Pastor Anna so ably serves. There'll be six people on this committee, and you can make your willingness to serve known to myself or call the church office. And now, a couple of announcements before we enter our, enter our sending time. This Sunday at in-person church, we will celebrate the baptisms of Hattie Jean Peterson and the joining of new members, her mom and dad, Craig and Danielle Peterson. Following worship, there'll be a buddy blessing, which is basically learning how to pray um, with some buddies, some stuffed animals. We invite families to attend that together. Um, and then we begin something we're really excited about this fall, our podcast about why does church matter? Understanding how to understand church. All you have to do is listen to the podcast called Strange New World. Just Google it. It'll pop right up. And then come join us Sunday after worship at 10, next Wednesday after worship at 7, or Monday mornings at 8. And we want this discussion of this podcast to resonate with voices across all the generations of people who belong to Prince of Peace. So we hope that we'll have participants from young to old as we talk about why church matters this weekend and then the following week. We are also looking for coffee captains. If you are someone who comes, in, or you don't even have to be here at the in-person worship, but you'd like to support a ministry of hospitality, if you think that's important that people feel welcome when they come here, um, there's sign-ups for the coffee captains in the Narthex hallway. And then we want to invite you to wor worship on Wednesday this week. First is a meal, and then worship, and then our discussion. Uh, worship's at 6.30, the meal's at 5 o'clock to 6.15, and the discussion follows right after worship for 45 minutes. So, and then next week when you come to church, bring your Bibles so you can be cool like all the third graders who are getting their first Bible. Those are announcements for this week at Prince of Peace. Now hear the words of the Lord and know that you are holy and honored and precious and loved. The blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, guard your going out and your coming in. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our sending music today is sung by Kendra Weezer. It's Faith Begins by Letting Go.